found it relatively easy actually. It's a funny thing, you know, you put your overalls on and you put the helmet on, jump in the car and, you, and you're a little bit anxious because I mean it's 10 years since I raced professionally really and, and you think, oh can you still do it? You have these self-doubts self as all sports people do and you get out and it just feels natural. It's like swimming or riding a bike, you just never forget how to do it really. You just, you, I think you lose the need rather than anything else. You don't actually lose the speed as such as long as you're physically up to it and your eyes are good enough. So. Now we uh, we dropped into the the groove and we've progressively improved each day. I mean, we we've, we've made the car better, but I think I, I'm certainly driving. You, you just get a little bit rusty, you're a bit aggressive with the brakes and the steering. But when you calm down and let the car do the work, the times start coming. I think these cars are doing roughly the same times we used to do in the full Group C cars around here. The tracks in better condition. Well, Le Mans cars don't have that much downforce, and, and certainly the older ones that I first used to drive in the 80s. Um, weren't as good a cars as these really. I mean, tyre development, brakes, aerodynamic understanding has moved on in that time. So, no, no great surprise there. I'm, they obviously don't feel like a Formula 1 car, they don't have the downforce they, uh, and they're much heavier. But I was pleasantly surprised, you know, I'd read a few things about these Daytona prototypes, uh, that they were a bit, a bit of a handful. So, my first few laps I was very pleasantly surprised at how the car turned in and it roughly did what I thought it was going to do next. I think there are 16 or 17 Daytona prototypes, so I think we'll, we should qualify just inside the top 10. I'd, it'd be great if we could finish inside the top 5, I don't have any greater expectations than that, it's too much to ask. These guys, you know, if you look at the lineup, so the drivers, they're young pros in, at the highest level of motorsport. They're in teams that are doing this, you know, teams of drivers that are doing this week in, week out, year in, year out. They know this race, they know this track. So. Um, I don't think we're the fastest lineup, so we've got to be the smartest and we've got to stay out of trouble, stay out of the pits and see how far we get. You hear so much about Daytona and it's you know, a big race, um, it's definitely a big race in the US calendar and well known throughout the world, Daytona 24. Um, so you see the track for the first time and you then understand how big the circuit is and understand how big a deal it is down in this area. Uh, it certainly dominates the uh, the landscape, that's for sure. But um, no, I'm really, uh, really excited. And you've got 30 degrees of banking, which is more than I ever used in an IndyCar race. Um, so you can pretty much place the car where you want it. The problem is coming off the banking into the infield. And for instance, turn one, very difficult, uh, very bland, no references. Uh, they've got a corner called the bus stop, which is like a high speed chicane. Also quite difficult to get some reference. So the circuit's been a little bit tricky picking it up, um, but you know, Having done a few laps now around there, I'm quite comfortable and uh, we seem to have got the car working where we want it and promising. It's easy to get the car to go quick for one lap, but we've got to make sure the car's still good after 30 laps and a set of tyres and it's usable and it's predictable and the next guy gets in and he can do the same thing and we have something that's still there after 23 hours and 59 minutes and we've still got the same vehicle uh, and that's really the basis of it and I think where we're finishing at this point we pretty much got that so you know race comes along track conditions different winds different whole thing may change but where we are now good I think we're topping out with the, the Daytona prototype and the banking around the 200 miles an hour area just uh, just maybe short of that um, you know with a draft certainly you're just about 200 so you know quick enough uh, if something goes wrong you're going to know about it and catching up with traffic with the slower GT cars is a little bit of a concern uh, having driven in the night here as well some areas are very well illuminated some areas are quite poor uh, and you know the level of driving is probably more different than what I'm used to because you know some of the guys here can actually turn up and drive from just coming out of a uh, motor racing school you know to term it in that way uh, and that's a little bit frightening because you know it's you've got no judgment you don't know the guy's experience you don't know how they react in a in a position on the track and you've you know you've pretty got to much suck it and see um, but that's what the beauty of the Rolex 24 is all about now I've done all the setup work you know because Martin wasn't that good at it um, but <laughs> No, being serious, uh, I think you know all of the drivers have had great input. Everybody's worked very hard. Team have done a tremendous job. Um, you know, also uh, sitting down with uh, Richard Dean from United Autosports and going through some data. That's been very helpful for uh, all of us. You know, even with our levels of experience, you never stop learning, and I think we've uh, we've gained. And honestly, I think we have a car that is capable of qualifying in the top six if we get everything right and with a little bit of luck. 
if we're in the top eight, top ten, then I'll be happy. The aim of the game for me, and I think the other guys, if we can finish in the top six, I think we would have done a tremendous job. Because don't get me wrong, this field is competitive. You know, we're running around with current IndyCar guys, IndyCar champions, 500 winners, NASCAR multiple champions. There's some top flight cars, top flight teams, top flight drivers. So, uh, you know, we're not going to kid ourselves, but we do have a chance of getting a result.